Hi, I'm Lauren with Craft Some Joy, and welcome back to my craft room and another episode to talk a little bit more today about another favorite tool. And if you are new here to my channel, I just want to say a warm welcome. And as always, a big hug to those of you who have hit the little subscribe button so that you know when I post videos. You are so appreciated. So today, let's jump right in and talk some more about trimming, trimming, trimming. So we went over in another video all the tips and tricks for the Creative Memories 12 inch trimmer. And this is a workhorse. It's a powerhouse for trimming. But I just want to make sure everyone is aware Creative Memories does not recommend the 12 inch trimmer for cutting photographs. It really performs best when used for cutting paper. So what do they recommend when you want to cut your photographs? Well, that is the Creative Memories personal trimmer. So we're going to kind of jump into this more. But in case you're wondering why, why, why do they recommend that you do not use your 12 inch trimmer to trim photographs? Well, I have the official answer for you. And that is the reason is the thickness and density of photos, which really is true. I mean, photos are thick and dense and they also have an emulsion on them and they are much harder on the trimmer blades. So these beautiful decorative and straight blades that are in the 12 inch trimmer than paper is. So if you do use this trimmer for photos, you're not going to get the same uh, amount of cuts or the performance out of the blades as you would if you just used this for paper. And so Creative Memories does recommend the personal trimmer because it's heavier, thicker blade is better suited for cutting photos. Okay, so, and of course we can use this for cutting all kinds of other things, which I'll get into later. Anyhow, I just wanted to kind of start by first telling you the recommendation. So we're going to put my 12 inch trimmer away. And in case you're interested in finding out more about the video and you haven't checked that, I will make sure to link it here in the video and it will be in the description as well. And all these wonderful products can be purchased right from my website, which is creativememories.com forward slash user forward slash Lauren Hines. And uh, it'll get shipped straight to your door. Okay, so let's talk more about this little power horse, this little personal trimmer. This little guy has been around for quite a while with Creative Memories. I think this was one of the first tools I ever purchased because I loved the little guillotine style cutter and the original model of this didn't have this fun little drawer but this model or the cutting mat on top, but this model now does have a drawer and a cutting mat. And it is perfect for cutting photos. So I did wanna just share a few little tips and tricks that I have learned because these two trimmers, the 12 inch trimmer and the personal trimmer are side by side on my workspace. I don't ever sit down to scrapbook without having both of these at my fingertips and it's just funny people have asked why do you use this one for cutting photos I don't know if it's like habit mostly habit or it just really does cut a beautiful straight edge on photos and it's just kind of a smaller easier format to work with so here's what I have learned with using the personal trimmer I do cut my photos and I typically leave my photos with a straight edge as you could probably see from other videos. I, I do my snap to grid format when I lay out my pages and so I do use my trimmer quite a bit for cutting my photos with straight, straight edges. Then what I have learned also is that I like certain size cuts. So I like three by three photos. I like four by four photos. I like four by five photos. And of course, sometimes I just love leaving my four by sixes. So in order to help me with those cuts, I decided to modify my trimmer just a smidge. And one of the first things I did is I just took my label maker 
one of my favorite products in my scrap room, which is the Brother P-Touch Label Maker. And I labeled with clear tape where my inch marks were on my trimmer, just so that at a glance, I could see those numbers very clearly. They are marked off here on the trimmer, but it is a white on white uh, marking. So I just made that super clear so I can look at a glance. The other thing I did is I marked, as I mentioned, I like cutting my photos sometimes at, at five inches. And so I went ahead and just used the dash again on my little P-Touch and created a line and measured it so that it is exactly five inches. So I know if I want to cut a photo and keep it at five inches, all I have to do is line up this photo right here on the five inch mark. And now I'm cutting exactly an inch off. For me, that is a little easier to do than hanging the photo off the side like this and trying to line it up with the one inch mark. It's just a little less awkward in my opinion to have the bulk of the photograph on the trimmer platform. Okay, so that was one of my first little modifications. And then I'm going to show you another favorite thing I learned how to do. So sometimes I also love knowing where my six inch mark is. And I discovered that what you could do is just pull that drawer out and flip it over and then create, you, you have to get your ruler out and, and do your measuring so you know exactly where everything is. But then I created some marks on the back of my drawer. So these little dotted lines are where I line up the edge of my trimmer. And now I have a six inch guide. So if I wanted to cut a larger piece of cardstock or a larger photograph, I can easily cut that down to a six inch mark, okay? The trimmer is such a nice little compact tool and it does have a very strong blade on it. So let's talk a little bit more about just how to use your trimmer for the best performance. So one of the things I learned many, many years ago are to kind of get in the habit of doing a few things. First of all, you wanna lift your arm all the way up because if it's halfway up, you're not gonna be able to get your photo all the way up to the top of the guide. So make sure your arm is all the way up. The blade on this is not sharp enough that it's gonna cut you. I mean, it's, it's sharp enough for cutting photos, but it really isn't razor sharp. So you're, that's a good thing to know. The other thing is, you. so once the blade is all the way up, you want to make sure to scoot your photo all the way to the top of the guide. Okay, you want to kind of just hear that click. Once you have it up, again, move your photo so that you can see exactly where you want to cut. So remember, I want to cut this into a four by four. I already know it's four this way, so I want to cut it four vertically. Okay, so I'm going to kind of line that up again to see. I'm, I want that mostly at the bottom here. My photo's all the way up, and then I want to put my finger on the finger guide. So important, because if I don't and I pull that blade down, my picture could move, right? So make sure you've got your photo all the way to the top put your finger on the finger guide. You don't want to stick it over here. No, that could hurt, but put it right here on the guide. Then we're going to pull down on the blade. Now, this again is the guillotine style blade, but there is a little trick. When you're pulling the blade down, you kind of want to give a little pressure towards the base of the trimmer. And again, this is just kind of practice and you just get in the habit of doing it. But the reason you do that is so that you get that exact precise cut because you are making sure that those metal pieces are coming into contact with each other when you're just giving it just a slight pressure towards the base. Now, if you just go straight down, that's fine too, but sometimes what I've noticed is over time with trimmers, this can get a little loose and you might have just a little gap between the blades. So to prevent any kind of uh, miscut, I always suggest just to give a little pressure towards the base. Okay, so now let's flip, it, flip our photo over and do the other side. 
Now I've got a clean guide to the fore and hold down and we've got a perfect four by four photo cut. And you can see this is another great way you can do it even here vertically. I always look at my photo, kind of center it between my four and the blade. So I know, okay, I'm gonna get a great four by four out this way, down, flip the paper, flip the photo around, all the way again to the top, press my finger down and bring the blade down. So now I have yet another perfect four by four cut. So I'm kind of into my dog right now. So in case you missed my last video, I introduced some new Creative Memories product and found that it actually goes really perfectly with my pet's album. So anyhow, I've got all my little marshmallow photos out and um, having so much fun scrapbooking my dog. <laughs> She's adorable. Okay, so now let's just talk a little bit more about how you can use this trimmer, not just for photographs, but also for other fun things. And one of the easiest uses I love is for card making. And the 12 inch trimmer also is amazing for making cards. And the Creative Memories has a beautiful, already boxed up blank card kit for you. And I never really got into cards so much, but now I'm really into making cards. And this is just a fun, easy way to get a really nice quality card, white blank card and envelope. And these envelopes are really thick and sturdy. You know, I, I love a really nice feel envelope and card. So this card, it really measures up in my opinion and the other fun thing is that you get this cute little gift box when you order a set of blank cards and so how fun is it to make a set of cards for someone so for this kit I used the National Scrapbook Day paper kit and I made a whole set of cards out of that one kit and I am gonna be sharing how I did this, so stay tuned for that. But now what I could do is put this whole set in the box and put a lid on it and wrap it up, put a bow, beautiful, fun, surprise someone with a fresh, fun set of homemade cards. Let's talk a little bit about how to make a card just using the personal trimmer. Now, you can also use your 12 inch trimmer and use the measurements and, and cut it exactly. But there are a lot of times, and if you've watched any of my scrapbooking videos, you've probably noticed how sometimes I like to just grab a pencil and make a little pencil mark exactly where I wanna cut. And I know this trimmer is so precise that if I just use that little pencil mark and line it up on the edge of my trimmer, again, pushing my photo, my mat all the way up to the top, holding here and bringing my arm down, that that cuts exactly where that little tiny pencil mark was. So that sometimes is just a time saver versus measuring everything out. I do like sometimes just to give it a little pencil mark and eyeball. So now we have a beautiful base for this card. And then the next step, what I wanna do is create the layer with the little mermaid. And so once again, I'm gonna put my card all the way in the trimmer and all the way up to the top. And whenever you're using this trimmer, one of the things I wanna point out is that you can see exactly where the cut line is gonna be because it's right at the edge of this finger guide. Okay, so you, you'll know exactly where your line is gonna cut. So I just usually eyeball again where that's gonna make its cut, bring the arm down, and now I have a nice little edge on this design. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna keep turning the card and making that same reveal around the image. And again, make sure your arm is all the way to the top so that you can make a straight cut. 
And then now I have this darling little mermaid as a layer for my card. And so once we have the pieces, all I need to do is grab my tape runner and layer those pieces down with a little adhesive. Again, just eyeballing that reveal. And then this one could either be just attached to the top or if I wanted some texture and dimension, I could put some foam squares. But I'm just going to go ahead and layer that right on here, right on the front. And isn't that adorable and so quick and such an easy, easy card to make. And I love having the little extra piece and I would could probably just use this right inside the card as a little extra fun and just add a little adhesive or when I write the sentiment to the recipient of this card. So one of the things that I love about this trimmer is just how precise a cut you can get. And if you ever wanted to kind of go back in and just cut a sliver off, it is so easy to do because this trimmer is so precise. So not only is this trimmer great for cutting photographs, it's wonderful for helping in making cards and cutting the thicker cardstock as well. Okay, now one last tip I have for you is, you know, over time, blades can start to dull, just like our kitchen knives can start to dull. So what you would wanna do is just take a piece of foil and fold it so that you can slide it right under the finger guide of your trimmer and as big as you can because you do want to kind of address the entire blade. So once I have that, it's folded over once and then I'm actually going to fold it over one more time. Okay, so we have a four sheet thickness for cutting this. And then what you want to do is just run the foil under your blade and start trimming. <laughs> So we're just going to keep going and little teeny tiny little cuts and you're just going to keep doing this until you have the whole sheet cut. Okay. And so there we have our little shredded pile of foil and you might have a few little remnants in your trimmer that you want to just shake out. But if you were having trouble with your blade kind of giving maybe a little ragged edge or just not cutting sharp and quick and fast, give the foil a try and see if that could help. And you're always welcome um, after the first go of foil if you feel like you still need to get a little better um, control on your blade, put another sheet or two through your, your trimmer. But I have seen this really help with getting your blade conditioned and cutting perfectly again. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about the Creative Memories personal trimmer and hopefully a few little tips and tricks that could help you whenever you sit down to scrapbook or make some beautiful cards. So the personal trimmer and the 12 inch trimmer are the two of the tools that I always have within reach every time I sit down to scrapbook. Thanks so much for watching and make sure to check out my Instagram page at craft.sum.joy and you can see what I'm working on in my craft room and get a behind the scenes look at some of my projects. And you are also welcome to stop by my Facebook page, which is Craft Some Joy with Lauren Hines. And that's where you'll find my Facebook groups and other postings that I do related to creative memories. So until next time, I hope you take time to craft some joy. Take care, be well, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.